Hello, how's everybody doing today? This week, I would like to talk about an enhancement to our photographs uh, called a vignette and spotlight. Now, a vignette is a subtle way to enhance our photograph, and it allows us to assist our viewer to find the main point of interest in our photograph. But for a vignette to be effective, it must bring in the viewer's attention by subtle changes in exposure and color. And that is the whole secret of a good vignette to bring in the viewer's attention without them realizing how we are doing this. Today, I just want to show you three methods that we use in Lightroom to create an effective vignette. The first one is just the standard effects tool that will let us do post-crop vignetting changes. The second one is a little more um, manual, and we're going to use our radio filter to create a vignette. And the last one is the one that I like to use a lot, and it's basically a total manual process, and that is using the linear gradient tool with our brush to create our vignette exactly like we want and to create our spotlight exactly like we want. So let's start out with our effects tool. Here we're looking at a photograph uh, and I've already made some changes to it. This is what it looks like. Uh, I've just done the basic corrections that I usually do with a tone and lens correction, and I've applied about 14 different masks to it to bring up different areas and enhance different areas of the photograph. But to start out with this, we are going to go to the effects tool, and we're going to apply our vignette here. Now this is a good tool, and I'm gonna go through all the settings here. The only con side, the downside to using this tool is that when we apply our vignette, we have no way to choose where the center is. It is just, we can change the shape, but we can't move the center of where the vignette will be uh, placed. But the other two methods, we can change that easily, and I'll show you how we do that when we get to that point. To start out, uh, the amount slider on our post-crop vignetting uh, brings in the exposure or increases the exposure so you can get a light side. Uh, today we're just going to talk about darkening the edges of our vignette. So we can bring it in and the further we bring it in, the darker our vignette gets. Now to start off my vignetting, I just bring it to look, looks like about a minus 50 right in that range and I'm going to lighten it up later. But to find the shape and to find my vignette better, I'm going to grab the feather slider and I'm going to bring it all the way to the left. And when we do that, we take the feather away from the edge and we can see exactly where this vignette is going to be applied before we feather the edges. So now that I have the feather all the way to the left, I'll be able to adjust my midpoint and the midpoint is that point in the vignette where nothing is applied to where the vignette starts and feathers out depending on how you had the feather set. So this shows us exactly, the midpoint shows us exactly what areas of the photograph will not be touched by the vignette. All right, so we'll put it about right there. Our next selection is roundness, and this is where we can change the shape of our vignette. So as we move it back and forth, we can go from a perfect circle to oval to rectangle with uh, sharper edges. So we're going to leave this as just pretty much standard uh, oval just like this. Now, once we have everything in place, then we can crank up that feather all the way to 100, and you can see how it changes and feathers out so we don't see uh, a whole picture in darkness. So if we go back and forth, uh, we can see this is with the vignette, this is without the vignette, this is with the vignette. Now the last slider is highlights and this allows us to protect the highlights of our vignette, whatever the vignette is affecting. So as we move this up and back, you can see that the highlight areas are protected. So it brings back the light in those highlight areas. Right. So let's leave our vignette about like this. We're going to lighten up the edges a little bit more. Look at before, after, before and after. It looks like a nice vignette. Now we also are going to talk about spotlight. I'm going to show you how to do that in all three methods. Uh, and to do that, we're just going to grab a radio filter. And we're going to put it right in what we think is the area of interest of this photograph. So I'm just going to draw my filter 
right here, right over the water. And because I want this to be very subtle, I do not want any feather. So I'm going to grab the feather here and move it all the way to the center. You can also go to the feather slider up here in our control panel and change it this way too. But you get a better look at it by seeing the feather ring when we use the slider in here. Now once we have our feather set, we're just going to turn up the exposure just a slight bit. I mean, a half a half a stop, a 0.50 is about all I'm going to take it. Now if we look at a before and after, we have a lot better look. So if I turn off my feather, this is what our vignette looks like. If I turn on my feather, we get a nice enhancement in the center of the photograph. Let me turn off all the masking. That way you can get a good look at before and after without all the masking marks. So a nice vignette just using the effects tool in Lightroom. Now we're going to start off again. We're going to get rid of this. And let me show this. This is a new feature that just came into effect yesterday at Lightroom 12.2. Uh, and if you look at your history panel, all the changes we made are right here. We now can delete all those changes at one time by clicking on the last one that we want to keep, which is exposure. Hold our Alt or Option key down and clicking. It takes everything away and takes us back to the beginning before we made any changes. So remember, you want to click on the, the last change you want to keep. Your Holder Option or Alt key down and click. And that will remove everything from the history and take us back to the way we were. So now if you look, there's really no vignette. It's just the changes that I made when we uh, finished working the photograph. All right, uh, method number two is just using purely our radial filter. In this one, I'd like to start out by shrinking down our picture. That's usually a command plus or command minus to make it smaller or larger. And we want to make it smaller because our vignette, radial vignette, is really going to kind of go off the photograph a little bit so we can get a good vignette. So we're going to choose radial, radial gradient, and we're going to draw our gradient over our picture. And as I can see, I, I want to go off the edges because I want these four corners to be affected where the sides I don't want to be affected as much. After we put our radio gradient in place, we want to click invert and we want to slide our exposure over. All right, so that's about as dark as I want to make it right there. Now, our midpoint is determined by our feather. So if we hover over the center, if we grab our feather and we can bring out our feather, which is our midpoint, and we're going to bring it to about right there. So now when we look at the picture, we're just affecting the outsides of our vignette. So as I move it back and forth, so I'm going to keep it about right there. We can now protect our highlights by using the highlight slider. So let me, let me crank this down a little bit so you can see the effects of the highlight slider. So we're going to make it a little darker than we should. I'm going to hit the highlight slider. You can see we're brightening up our highlights. So we're protecting them. We don't want that vignette on our highlights. Uh, also, which is an extra feature doing this way, we have a way to protect our shadows. So if we grab our shadow slider, you can see on the edges, especially on the rocks there, we can protect those rocks and keep the vignette, but protect those rocks from getting too dark. So I'm going to crank up my highlights and my shadows a little bit. I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit. Now there's one other feature what we have when we use this method, and that's, remember, the amount slider. And that affects all these changes equally. So after I get my vignette in place, I could grab the, the uh, amount slider and move it back and forth to what I think is a good vignette. So we'll leave it about right there. And if we look at our before and after, we have a pretty good vignette just using our radio filter. Now, another good thing about using the radio filter, we'll click right here, this is the one. We now have the ability to move our center point. Remember in our effects module, we couldn't change where this vignette would be applied. It was always going to be in the center of the picture. But now if we hover over our little dot right in the center, we can move this vignette to any place that we think might be good for the type of photograph that we're working on. On this photograph, it's obviously going to be in the center, but there might be some photographs that you want your vignette 
vignette a little off center and this would allow you to do that again you can't do that with the effects module only when you're using your radio filter all right now that we have our radio filter in place let's go ahead and put a little spotlight in there again we're going to use another radio filter we're just going to draw the area of interest that we want this filter to be in about right here remember we don't want a midpoint we want a hundred percent feather so it looks nice and even as we apply the effect so we're going to put this exposure just a little little bump just right there again you know half an f stop at most so 45 50 right there and if we look at what it looks like without the spotlight that's what we have with the spotlight see so it's very subtle but it really brings the eye in so now if we look we'll take away this is what it looks like without the vignette and without the spotlight so let's add the vignette back and the spotlight there we go so let's look at this before after before after so you can see we have a very good vignette drawing the viewers eyes open and then we just pop it just a little bit more with this spotlight radio filter right in the center all right let's clean this up and go to our third method remember we're going to use this new method so we want to keep everything up to exposure so we're going to click on exposure then i'm going to hold my alt or option key down and click and it takes everything away brings us back to the regular picture look before and after before and after no vignette apply all right i'm going to shrink this down again just a little bit so i can see the whole picture this next method is a full manual method so you can define your vignette vignette exactly like you want and this is the method i use most of the time because it allows me to paint on my vignette exactly like i, I want it to appear to start out with this method, we're going to go to our masking and we're going to apply a linear vignette or a gradient. All right. What we want to do is we want to move our crosshairs down to the bottom, right near the bottom. We want to hold our shift key and we want to click and drag. We want to drag all the way off. And what we're doing is we're applying this linear gradient and a on the picture a solid gradient across the whole picture and what we're going to do is paint away where we want our vignette to be so the next thing we want to do is go to subtract we want to choose a brush and we're going to keep our feather at 100 percent because we want to have really soft edges as we paint away the areas of the photograph we don't want the vignette applied the flow i usually keep it at about 60 percent and this tells us how much we can remove from the picture at one time when we're painting. If you think it's going too slow, just bump up your flow and that'll change it. And I leave my, leave my density at 100%. Make sure auto mask is off because we don't want to have any uh, changes based on color. All right, once we have that in place, now we're just going to start painting. So I'm just going to be dragging around. First, I start on my edges where I, I know I don't want the vignette to be. Uh, I want to get it right around here, about like this. And once I have my edges defined, then I just start subtracting from the center of the photograph where I want no effect at all of the vignette. And you just take your time and just paint it exactly the way you want it to look. So here, this is kind of like an egg shape is what I'm coming up up with here. I'm going way up high, but I'm still leaving the edges like this. All right, once you have that painted the way you want, then we, we apply our exposure. So as I bring my exposure, exposure in, you can see those are the areas that are magenta. Let me turn the overlay on. The areas that are magenta are where the darkness is going to be applied. Now, if you want, you can turn the overlay off and you can change your exposure and if you see any edges that you don't like i'm going to turn it real high um, you can just paint in more areas that you want cleaned up all right so after we have our exposure the where the place place that we want you now again you have control of your highlights you want to protect any highlights you want to protect any of the shadows So now if we turn our vignette off and on, you can see the areas that 
or affected by the vignette are the one areas that we left unpainted or left the vignette or the mask alone, whatever is magenta is where our vignette will be applied. Now we want to put a spotlight in place and you can do this one of two ways. You can use the radio math like we did before, or you could just add a brush. And this, I keep the flow kind of low, about 40%. And we're going to have our overlay on and we're just going to lightly paint. Let's take this down a little bit lower, about 30, 30%. We're going to lightly paint the areas that we want the spotlight to be. So I'm going to put a little bit everywhere. And then we just want to hit the exposure. Just like we did before, between 40 and 50. And there we have our uh, spotlight. So if we take the spotlight away, you can see those areas. It's very subtle. It's in the waterfall itself, some along the tree, and some in the, the reflection of the water here. And if, Let's take away the spotlight. Let's take away our vignette. Put our vignette back and put our spotlight back. Just like that. Now let's close our masks and we can use the before and after. So this is the method that I like to use a lot because it'll let me apply the vignette kind of in an odd shape, but exactly where I want it. And then it allows me to apply my spotlight, not to just one area, but to multiple areas of the photograph to bring the attention in where I want the viewer to uh, enjoy the picture. I hope these methods help you out when you're processing your photograph to enhance them for your viewers. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll answer all your questions or help you with any of these processes that you might need help with. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon.